Hello Internet, my name is Mark. I'm a computer science and linguistics double major with a minor in game design studying at NYU. I've been working on a game and today we are back with devlog number two and uh, pretty standard format today. Got most of my checklist done this week, didn't meet my strut goals unfortunately. And while I haven't started prototyping, the learning experience has been pretty great so far. Right before we jump into it, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to comment down below with what you've been working on lately and what your goal is for next week. So last Friday, I did a little bit of the Unreal courses and today, Saturday, after watching Thin Matrix's devlog and one of DevDuck's devlogs, which is what today's format is inspired by, I sat down and worked on the Bulls and Cows game at 2x speed. Set out to get through quiz five, but got all the way through quiz six. I just wanted to make sure it was because I wanted to do these courses and not because I felt as though I needed to, hence the smaller goal. I'm really anxious to start working on Seashell though, so I'm speeding through this intro level stuff in order to feel at least a little bit ready to jump into Unreal on my own, since the code and whatnot isn't that new to me. So, so Sorting myself out and putting my watch into Do Not Disturb, I jumped into it. Courses like this one I grabbed for super cheap on a humble bundle and can be found on Udemy are super helpful for me because they go super in depth, like how Unreal has its own types, such as using F string and Y. Nothing the docs don't contain, of course, but zooming through videos and directed projects is a bit of an easier path to follow and gives me a little bit of a sense of accomplishment. Then I needed to get some reading done for my upcoming intro to game design class, about 107 pages of reading to do every week, split up over the four days of the week. This is a 12 week class compressed into three weeks. Weeks. Even having just gotten the first part of the reading done, I know that this class will open my eyes to so many more avenues to explore things I don't even know I don't know. I don't want to take paper notes anymore because it felt quicker to just take them in Adobe Acrobat. Those still keep me engaged in the reading. Anyway, my brand new maroon sweatshirt just arrived in the mail. I'm almost done with my full minimalist wardrobe revamp and hopped onto a call to catch up with a friend for a bit before moving on to the rest of the day. Later that evening, I felt a bit inspired and decided to articulate my thoughts based around what I have with the first island and grind a bit on the the game design document. When you can type out 160 words per minute, it goes by pretty quick. Anyway, this document was taken from the masterclass course by Will Wright. I just brought it into Microsoft Word for live editing and we'll be working on it with the first zone in mind for the next update, which you're watching now. I got up to the narrative portion, but since I haven't figured out the first zone nor the long term of the game, that's where I stopped for the night. Now I'm doing a lot of learning and I would love to just jump into things, but I have time so I want to be patient with the material. A downside with the learning course is that all the foundations are made for you, but I'm hoping it will just remove the mystery of Unreal Engine to me, so then I feel more comfortable jumping in. Plus, by the end, I'll actually feel a little bit of accomplishment having a few pre-made games under my belt. Also, I want to work on the narrative design and have a have a good direction for the game and be working on the art and the, the models, the assets, before I jump into Unreal. So that being said, I'd love to have a basic understanding of where the end goal of my story is heading for this game, of what kind of assets I'm going to need. They're not going to be great, nothing's going to be great at the start, but I do want to be able to work on that alongside learning as I get into the actual game. Come around Sunday, my alarm woke me up at 8.15, but then I attempted to fall back asleep for a bit and eventually got out of bed at 8.30. Showered through my clothes in the laundry, checked Discord, responded to some messages, then phoned down and watched into Do Not Disturb. I jumped into Unreal courses because I was feeling particularly driven that morning after last night's journaling session. Today was a lot of code stuff such as functions and post pre-decrement, which I'm already very familiar with. What I'm not familiar with though is Unreal's conventions for things like function headers, so I kept the videos on 2x speed and did the challenges to feel some sense of accomplishment. This stuff is certainly basic, such as going over pointers in a very generic overview, but it's helping me build momentum for now. The next course starts off from a blank project and that's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm sure I can at least start building up Seashell once I have less confusion and less fear of the unknown. Then, since I realized last night I hadn't beaten all of the staff ghosts on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for Switch, I did that intermittently throughout the day as well as working on the readings for my class. The readings talked about some analogies to describe game design as well as things like iterative design and whatnot. Lots of callbacks to what Wright talks about in his master class as well. These will be the things we go over in class, but I'd rather get ahead this weekend than worry about reading every single night. It's also amazing to see these concepts because it's going to be excellent learning this in a formal environment whilst working on my first game. Later that night I wanted to work on my first island and how it would serve as a tutorial but I didn't get to it. Finish up chapter 8 in Bulls and Cows it was all a programming conceptual overview so that went by pretty quick and then I wrapped up my evening with wrecking some more staff ghosts in Mario Kart on stream. Come Monday we had a pretty straightforward day, just did some reading for my class, filled out the first quiz and uh was just pretty much just a reading assignment due every day before class. And then I finished up Bulls and Cows later in the evening. I'll start the next part of the course once the rest of Seashell tasks are complete, so probably on Friday though, it depends on the depth of my class project, how my class is going so far, and how I feel pretty lost in terms of getting to the full overview narrative of the game. That might be a little while. Anyway, knowing this, Seashell work this week will be sketching and designing that first island, but uh, got a few days, so I ended the day hoping I could push to do it throughout the week alongside my class. I'll certainly have the time, but making the time will be up 
up in the air with a bit of intensity I imagine might be brought on by the class. Friday, Mark speaking now, I was right, I didn't get to sketching, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. After that, we turn into a sleepy boy and on to Tuesday, getting a good rest in for the first day of my class. So Tuesday, I woke up nice and refreshed, went out to get some breakfast and skipped the Build My Thing stream. Then at one, it was time for my first class. I'm super amped to kick it off because the prof seems super engaging and from the Slack, the other students do as well. If you wanna hear more about that, let me know. I'll have a day in the life coming out in a week or so. But without further ado, the class was over and I had a whole list of stuff I needed to get onto for the rest of the day. Didn't get any other work on Seashell today since I just wanted to crunch out the rest of my other tasks and the script is pretty long, so I felt like I was doing good. So skipping through to Wednesday, woke up at 8 a.m. Uh, Slowly working my way down for the upcoming full semester and made breakfast while my dog was yearning for food. I finished up the A-roll cut for the Todoist workshop video that went out last Wednesday, finished up the thumbnail and did a little bit of build my thing work but didn't stream. Class ended up being pretty straightforward for the day and the last two hours in lab were working with my teammates in Tabletop Simulator to design a game of which the core mechanic was press your luck, but of course I forgot to record. Oops. Tried to force myself to sit down and brainstorm plot lines for the first zone environment and story after I finished that night's homework but failed, so I will hopefully be doing more of that tomorrow and Friday. Thing is, my productivity took a pretty big hit after democracy began falling apart that day. So uh, anyway, I also realized in my readings it would be cool to have player agency factor into each zone as if players were writing their own stories, but an idea to revisit perhaps. Kicking off Thursday was pretty chill and got to working on Build My Thing. Yet again, I didn't stream because I wanted to focus on errors and when OBS is running, there's a lot of lag, so I didn't want to have to worry about that. Plus chat might be pretty distracting, but hoping to stream this weekend. I also want to start streaming video games from an analytical point of view because from my game design class, I'm realizing that I really should play more games and maybe make a monthly game analysis video or something. Let me know what you think. But anyway, moving on, I really like the purple orange look for mini games. And honestly, I think it might just be time to write a mini library for myself if I plan on making more of these. I worked out the bugs for player joining and such and got started a little bit on the core game loop, players building and those guessing, switching out after a given amount of time. The mini game is based on Scriblio. You can watch last week's devlog for more information on that. Next up is all the fun mechanical stuff involved in voting, making sure builders can't build outside their region, etc. Went to see if my game loop code would work with the one player debug I had set up, but an issue with the sign showing players joining, uh, not updating, caused me to spend a solid 40 minutes on it before thinking, you know what, it's super small and I'll put that on the back burner to figure out later. I met with a classmate right before my game design class so we could set up the game uh, in Tabletop Simulator so that we'd be slightly ahead for when we got to lab that day. Class went well and we feel pretty good about our game. Then after a nice Chipotle dinner and backgammon practice for my rematch, next weekish, my aim was to get to work on some RPG maker learning, more on why I'm doing that next week, to just figure out how the scripting works and do some basic tasks. But I didn't get that done. Nice. Anyway, finished up my homework real quick, got some thinking done on the first zone stuff and was able to bounce some ideas off of someone. Pretty much just treated it as a journaling exercise and I got some pretty good ideas out on paper. I think as I collect these over time, I'll have some good ideas for a good narrative. Anyway, tomorrow is Friday and that's pretty much editing this video and maybe getting stuff done. So let's cut to live Mark. So yeah, that brings us to right now, Friday. There's a ton of editing I gotta do for this week. I just finished cleaning up the script, about to jump into recording all the voiceover stuff you just heard and then editing this video before my class, hopefully. But all in all, pretty straightforward process and all felt pretty timely. I might get into some planning today, but just to recap, I got the Bulls and Cows course done. I did some edits on the game design document, which feels pretty good. I didn't get any sketches done and I didn't get that first floor block model done. What are my goals for this week? Now, my class has been taking up a lot of time, but I wanna get a little bit through the escape game on the Unreal course over the weekend. I wanna have a deeper understanding of the narrative I'm going for. I wanna have a few basic assets. I'm thinking a block model of just that first floor and maybe just a really primitive model of the island, just so I can throw them into Unity or Unreal and get prototypes and get a feel for the controls. I have some RPG maker stuff that I'm gonna work on, so more on that next week, perhaps. I think I'm just gonna flesh out this first part of the game and maybe not worry about the end goal of a narrative. I've been reading uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Frick by Mark Manson again, and he just has this concept about not trying. Now, I'm not trying to make some massive game because this is my first game. There's no expectations for it to blow up. After just one week of this intro to game design class, I'm confused and bewildered in the best ways possible. You know, what problems can I solve? What niches can I enter? What mechanics can I use to solve the different problems that I find. I just want to make a game, and if it's amazing, great. If it's not, eh, 
so be it. All that being said, over the past week, kind of what I've been thinking is that I want to make the game something that invokes childlike nostalgia. So if I can ask you, you know, what do you think about when you think nostalgia? When you sit down in front of a game or a TV show, what's the thing that says that is for children or that is for adults? I'd love to hear your thoughts on those two questions down below, as well as just what nostalgia means to you. What activates nostalgia for you? Because I want this game to have this idea, you know, a kid could sit down and play and really have fun with it, but also there's just this deeper meaning for adults, this casting back into childhood of what childlike nostalgia was. A show I've been watching recently is called Hilda. It's on Netflix and it's it's the epitome of this idea. It's a great show. It's got wonderful animation. It's got some adult jokes and they're not inappropriate, but things that are just kind of subtle that a kid wouldn't really get. I don't know. They just do a great job with the normalcy of the world and the kids are going on adventures and the adults still have lives to worry about. Fantastic show and it really makes me wonder, but also a little scared because how am I gonna do that? I you know, there's so much design and stuff that goes behind shows like that, and I'm I'm nowhere near ready to make that kind of stuff. How do I create memorable characters? How can I create an in-depth plotline? How do I create music and art that gives the right message? How do I interweave these things over such a broad narrative while also having little episode plotlines, so to speak? Anyway. We're gonna keep brainstorming over this week and that's the kind of direction I wanna take it. So as opposed to sitting down and messing around with Unreal for an hour, I'm thinking maybe brainstorm for an hour where things can go. So that I have a much better idea to give to you, the viewer. That's it for now. I'm gonna edit this video up Saturday. We're gonna plan out the things for the week and I'm not sure what I'll do for next devlog. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to comment what you're working on down below. What do you wanna see from yourself next week? What do you wanna see from me next week? What do you wanna see from everybody else next week? And switching cams real quick because what you guys do want to get done this week, we have Phantom Man who also started to learn game design in Godot. Wishing me luck in my development journey. You too, my friend. I wanted to get into Godot, but also I just, Unreal was good for internships and job stuff. Sean Day for Smash, not very sure, but maybe RPG Maker or language stuff, both of which I'm also very much into myself. Do my undergraduate research project on language acquisition. And my friend Matt is working on his Slack bot, so I hope that's going well. The Discord server will be announced by Devlog 4 or 5. Progress is slow there, but it's on track. I also have a cool link down below, Ira Glass on storytelling. It's a two minute video on Vimeo. I think it's definitely worth the two minute watch. Anyway, thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.